Hello and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League Community Project Part 3, I'm going to say. I mean, I shouldn't really be losing count after potentially two episodes, but because it's not done daily and it's only done once a week, I, yeah, I, I'd lose track. However, the team has changed again. Um, I've taken on your your comments that you had, that you left and things like that, and then probably promptly ignored them. Um, no, we, we've gone in. It's, 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 it's changed. It's changed somewhat. I mean... It's really hard. Fantasy football is really hard to get players that you... I want all the good players. That's the problem. I want all the good players. I don't want people like Burke and Webster and Connolly and Target and Mark Noble. But somehow they're all in my team. Uh, <laughs> right, so for some explanations then. Um, there was a general consensus that Wood probably wouldn't be one of the best strikers to have in fantasy football, so he is gone. Mitrovic comes back in after an outcry to say that we've got to keep him in, so Mitrovic is back in the team. Romero comes in as the backup goalkeeper purely because I do think he's going to move to Aston Villa, and then I think once we've brought him in and then he moves to Aston Villa, either his value will go up because more people will then put him in the team, or we get a decent backup goalkeeper in Romero who we can bring in when Patricio is playing difficult teams and Aston Villa aren't playing such difficult teams. I think that's the key there. Big consensus to keep Aubameyang and De Bruyne in the team and bring back Bruno Fernandes so he is in the team as well. Defence is still the weak point beyond these three. Matt Target is probably going to concede a lot of goals and it, Leicester aren't going to buy him now because they've bought in uh, Catania from Atlanta or at Atlanta and uh, Webster again he's a good defender for Brighton but they will more than likely concede goals against the bigger bigger team so it's going to be highly unlikely that that back three will change fairly often Patricio will be our first team goalkeeper most of the time as well um, that is probably going to be the midfield Mark Noble's in there, not because he's a good player, but he takes penalties. He will he will start for West Ham. He's the club captain, although he has just had his outburst about them saying selling um, Diaganana. Diaganana? Diagan, Diagan, Diagana. 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 I think it's Diaganana. The really highly rated young winger. Um, he's just been very outspoken about that on Twitter. So he may get dropped, but who knows. Um... De Bruyne, Aubameyang, Fernandez, brilliant midfield three. They're going to stay in. That's not a problem. Martial up front, Mitrovic up front. Connolly did play towards the end of the season, played quite a large number of games, and Brighton haven't bought in a new striker. So I think Connolly may start up front because, I mean, Glenn Murray's getting past it, and Brighton don't really have that many other options. If we go and have a look at Brighton, uh, if we go by Brighton and then look at strikers, so it's more than likely going to be Nils Mape up front. And I can't see them using Andone that much. I can't see them really relying on Glenn Murray. So I thought Connolly would be a good shout to have in there because he's, he's quick. He'll come off the bench. He might nip a late goal or something like that. I think it could be quite useful. The only other thing I was looking at is maybe, because I haven't looked since they signed Van Der Beek, is how much... See, Van der Beek's not in here yet. That's annoying. That is very... Oh, there he is. Seven, seven million. He's never going to score that many goals. It's not worth it. Not worth it at all. Um, but, yeah. And then the other one was to look at uh, Kai Havertz from Chelsea, who I will assume must be in a similar position where he's going to be on page two. No, is he not here yet either? Nope, he's not here yet either. He's not been put in the game yet. So... Yes, but let me know again. We've got one more week. So games start in the Premier League on Saturday. So your comments below. I will be making the changes on Friday, releasing a video on Friday to say this is how we're going into the first game week. So I need two comments below. Separate them out so you get a comment for each. One, which changes do we make for transfers? Because we get a de the deadline is Friday, so I need to make those changes before Friday. And then the second comment, like which players do we want to bring in? Who do we want to try and get rid of? That's comment number one. Comment number two is what starting 11 do we pick from the players that we've got? You can include the players that you want me to pick as well. Obviously, Hoiberg's gone. I just don't think he's going to score many points. Um, and I'd rather have three unbelievably good midfielders and then Mark Noble rather than have um, Pierre Hoiberg in there and then getting rid of Pierre Hoiberg meant I could sign, bring Noble and bring in Mitrovic so it worked out pretty well um, 
but yeah, let me let me know down below who should we replace and who should we have as our starting eleven going into the first week of fantasy football. I mean, if it, if it doesn't keep traction up through the season, I'll probably just let this die off as a series. But I I would like to keep it going because I do always drift off and I always finish bottom of all the leagues that I enter. So yes, we'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and see. But that is how it looks at the moment. Obviously, we do have we have spent all of our money. So if you're thinking about bringing players in and taking players out, we obviously have to be aware of what's like money situations. Now, it's just hit me that I could get David De Gea and Nick Pope. Am I paying too much for Patricio? Does that free up 5.5 of a million we could put somewhere else if we just have two goalkeepers? If we sort by price... So 5.55, so Leno, would Leno be a better choice than Patricio? Probably not. Chelsea are probably going to buy a new goalkeeper. Pickford probably won't concede too many. Ramsdale might be a good shout for 5 million. We did have someone earlier on that said Ramsdale would be a good option. That's interesting. So Fabianski's a great goalkeeper on his day, but West Ham, you just don't know. Oh, man, that's tough. Because that would free up 0.5 a million, and then we could definitely upgrade on either Noble or Connolly. Let's take Patricio out. I just think... I think Sheffield United are going to concede a lot of goals this year. I think they are. I mean, Pickford isn't brilliant. Leno isn't... Leno isn't too bad an option for 5 million. It's just bizarre that Romero's the same price as Leno. No. Do you know what? Do you know what? We're going to stick with Patricio. We're going to stick with Rui Patricio. We're going to stick with that. So we're going to cancel that and go back into my team. We're, this is the team that I've picked so far with your comments and everything like that taken on board. Let me know what you think. Leave those two comments down below. One, who should we trade out and who should we bring in? Two, what should our starting 11 be? Is this our starting 11 for the first week of the season? Remembering that obviously Fernandez doesn't have a game. Martial doesn't have a game and Target doesn't have a game. We could be in a little spot of bother that first week. But let me know down below. Thank you so much for keeping involved in this. I, I'm, I'm very excited by it if it keeps the traction that it's got. But let me know. For now, I'm out. Cheers. I, fantasy football. It's brilliant, but it's also uh, awful. Love it.